развитие закон о фонировании был принят в 1995 году, закон о и было выделено три уровня, на которых проводится уже страшное проблемы, национальный уровень. State is national level. National level. It's on all, all territory of Estonia. Ah, and county is a rayon. We have 15 counties. And, and first, uh, you should uh, designate the uh, ecological network uh, at the state level, which is like a vision. I will show the maps, then uh, it's a vision without any very clear borders. It's just... Uh, and at the municipality level, we are drawing very exact borders and we are defining very, very exact uh, land use conditions and restrictions. <laughs> Четко прорисована граница не больше, когда концептуально, семантическая картинка, то на муниципальном уровне то там уже четко произведены границы и можно все видеть. And uh, for implementation of this uh, concept in special planning, uh, we worked uh, out the methodology, and if you know that. Uh, the main elements of ecological network are go areas at different level, ecological corridors, and in some countries also a buffer zone around go areas or corridors is, is uh, defined. <clears throat> and uh, this is map, uh, and uh, for um, implementation, we, we, we had uh, at the county level, rayon level, thematic plan called defining environmental conditions for the development of land use and settlement structure. And there were two sub themes one was green network, other one was available cultural and historical landscape. And for both uh, thematic plan, uh, new methodology uh, was worked out. And uh, the first task was to define what is the purpose of uh, ecological network or green network. And like I said before, the only purpose is not nature conservation, but uh, we defined that uh, the green network should guarantee the naturally, environmentally and socio-economically grounded space structure based on location of the different infrastructures and needs analysis of society. Then we, we also gave this multifunctional approach. <laughs> It's a harmonized territory then. I mean, it's, it's very uh, difficult to translate. Maybe it's better in the next slides where all those purposes are listed. Uh, what, what, uh, what is the purpose of uh, Green Network in Estonia? You can just uh, highlight some of them. <laughs> I mean, it's, uh, it's to, to support protected areas. Uh, to support biodiversity, of course, uh, to, to compensate the human impact, anthropogenic impact. I mean, we, we need some buffer uh, strips along the roads and uh, between industries and, and settlements and so on. Uh, then to support the good living environment. Uh, then to promote nature conservation outside protected areas, to minimize conflicts between different infrastructures, I mean, between railway and uh, green network or highway and green network, uh, just 
Да, это очень важная задача, если это будет минимизация будущих конфликтов между различными секторами, охраны природы, лесное хозяйство, сельское хозяйство, транспорт, рекреация. And uh, in the case of conflict, uh, we should think uh, always what is the measure to mitigate this impact. And uh, uh, nowadays, uh, when we are building new railway or new highway, then uh, we are also using those uh, echo ducks. There are just three echo ducks so far in Estonia, but we have planned more than 20 now already. Highways. No, no, uh, I mean, uh, when we are building new highway and we can see that there is conflict between the highway and the corridor, green corridor, then we are planning to build ecoduct, ecological uh, uh, bridge. It's called ecoduct, yeah. Then this is the mitigation measure. Примеров того, как мы можем минимизировать эти конфликты, это уже на этапе проектирования учесть, что здесь надо транспорт, да, покажем какую-то инфраструктуру, но если в том же месте проходит какой-то логический коридор, вы строите этот более элементированный инфраструктуры, типа вот это какой-нибудь мост, для того, чтобы не капитающие и земноводные могли передвигаться. But what, what is the term in Russian ecoduct? <laughs> and then uh, we worked out the methodology and uh, I mean what are the criteria on what basis you can uh, designate the core area or you can designate the corridor and we used two types of uh, criteria one was based on morphometrical parameters, what is the extent of the corridor or what is the area of core area and uh, ecological, environmental, socio-economic uh, values or peculiarities. And of course we look at the distribution of habitats, uh, natural areas, uh, uh, species distribution as well, then I don't go into, in, into the detail, but I just gave one example that if the natural area is bigger than 100 square kilometers, then it's already, it, it would be co-area at international importance. <laughs> And of course we look also at the distribution of protected areas. Then if there is already protected areas, then it means that it is already suitable territory for quarry. And here you can see map, it just merged together all 15 uh, county uh, uh, plans, 15 green network plans prepared at county level in the first uh, and those uh, red areas they are existing, they are already uh, existed, uh, existing uh, protected areas and then you can see that uh, in those large core areas there are enough, uh, enough uh, red color that they are most valuable core areas. Получится, если объединить все 15 районных сетей, то вы увидите, что ядра, международных ядра как раз достаточно. But at the same time you can see that all those corridors and core areas, they are not very strict, they are just uh, free-handed uh, drawings. Uh, you will see in, in the next slides that what, what does it mean. It's just a concept, it's just a vision where the network should uh, locate. And also you can see that in different uh, regions or different rayons, counties, uh, 
little bit different approach was used, but uh, it's, it's already detailed. Then let's look at one uh, county. Uh, this is Harju County, which is the most uh, populated uh, area next to Tallinn. You can see Tallinn here, yes? Airport here. In the morning, uh, be before I came here, I went to have a cup of coffee, because without coffee I would be very sleepy, and then I look at the local newspaper. It's a Pskov, uh, I don't know what was the title, and there was the short information and the first uh, article what I read that Chuk Chuk to Tartu, then there is discussion that uh, there will be a uh, train connection from uh, Pskov to Tartu. Uh, it's under discussion, then, <laughs> then, then it, it could, could be happened that maybe in coming years uh, there will be two or three trains uh, from Tartu to Pskov and then to St. Petersburg or to Moscow. Then, uh, then, uh, you don't have a train connection with Riga? No, yes, we don't have them. We have very good cooperation even with Latvia then. <laughs> we, <laughs> we are very happy that we have train connection from Tartu to Tallinn, which now is 100, one, one hour 50 minutes. Uh, then it's, uh, quite reasonable, and there are six or seven trains a day, but uh, this is the only area in Estonia where you have a lot of barriers and it's, it's causing a problem uh, uh, for, for large, large animals. But uh, just example, this peninsula here, this is the municipality called Vimsi, and if you take this uh, green network map at county level, you can see, uh, and then put on the municipal level, then you, you can see that all those uh, core areas, they are in the right place, but they don't uh, overlap with the uh, forest or park exactly. Then the task of the municipal plan is to have very exact delineation of those areas and put the uh, right land use conditions. <laughs> And uh, according to the methodology, then usually we first designate in core areas, and then we are looking at uh, how the, those core areas are interlinked, interlinked, and then we we are starting to think where the corridor should follow. And in a special plan, we usually are listing uh, general uh, land use conditions for all core areas at a certain level, for all corridors at a certain level. And then it's possible that every core area, every corridor has also their own ID. And, and for certain purposes, we can add specific uh, conditions exactly only for this core area or only for this uh, corridor. <laughs> And 20 years ago, it was the first time when we did all planning in GIS. There was no paperwork at all. Then uh, we only used those uh, maps and layers which were available in digital. I mean, nowadays it's very, very natural. But uh, 20 years ago, it was quite you know, advanced and innovative. And it was, no, I mean, this uh, expert who worked with uh, with uh, uh, computer, then uh, you had those core areas, and then uh, he or she look at the map and throw those those corridors according to the land use according to the values. And we used more than 200 different uh, thematic maps. Uh, 
использовал действие тематических карт, чтобы определить, где происходит. And there are just some uh, examples of those different layers. I mean, there are, there are not 200 different uh, themes, but I mean, uh, nature conservation could have 20 different uh, themes and so on, what, what, uh, what to consider. And we also look at the grey infrastructure, which was negative for, for uh, green infrastructure. And also today, when you have this first assignment, uh, there are some land cover types which are belonging to the grey infrastructure uh, you should also rank them i mean roads uh, railways uh, mining areas uh, top sites and so on and so on Additional to those drawings, it's very important to uh, agree necessary land use condition and limitations for core areas and corridors. Uh, and like I said, they are a generalist of uh, land use condition and limitations, and we could, we, we could add uh, very specific conditions for certain core area or for certain corridor. Um, and it's very important uh, to involve different stakeholders because every interest group have their own target and what could be ideal for the nature conservationist is, is nightmare for maybe forester or, or some uh, uh, developer then uh, it's always it's very important when you're doing this territorial planning to involve right institutions to involve right uh, NGOs and to have open public hearing. It's just some examples who are the governmental stakeholders related to uh, designing a green network, who are the civil society, local people, landowners, uh, environmental NGOs, and also business companies. <laughs> Yeah, it's always uh, very important in environmental management or special planning to involve uh, stakeholders and and. Uh, discuss openly. I mean, there are always conflicts of interest. It's, it's quite normal. And uh, by nowadays, uh, we can conclude that all 15 counties in Estonia have defined and uh, approved this green network at the county level. Uh, and uh, so far, maybe all the municipalities has implemented and now when we have this uh, territorial, territorial reform, every municipality should have a new uh, comprehensive plan in coming three years and hopefully by 2023 or 4, all municipalities will also have this uh, special plan on Green Network. And um, what, uh, what did we learn from uh, our, those two round uh, planning? Uh, uh, we, we think that uh, it, it is very important to have a multifunctional approach to the green network, not only talk about the aims of nature conservation, but think about these recreational areas, uh, think about the uh, healing landscape and so on. And now the new concept is uh, how to consider ecosystem services. <laughs> And then it's very important to include all uh, stakeholders uh, and in the case of uh, territorial planning or special planning uh, always uh, 
representatives from forestry, agriculture, transport, transport and recreation is very important to involve. And it's, it's not only important to have nice colorful maps with all those quarries and corridors, but even more important is to have uh, described right implementation mechanism uh, to describe the right uh, land use conditions, uh, uh, restrictions, etc. And uh, we should plan together three different types of infrastructure, green infrastructure, blue infrastructure and grey infrastructure. It could be, I don't know, but what is red? <laughs> <laughs> network of network of hospitals. <laughs> and Seri infrastructure at the, at the railway and roads and uh, settlements and so on and very often green infrastructure and green infrastructure they could have conflicts and then you should think how to handle with this conflict how to how to mitigate the conflict <laughs> and of course very very important question is uh, does green infrastructure functioning or not and of course uh, there are several uh, methodologies how to measure how to analyze uh, function of functioning of uh, green network and and very often we need uh, data from monitoring then we should uh, at least in Estonia we, we, we had the conclusion that we should re redesign national level monitoring system to get the right answers about the functioning of ecological network this is the most important message from this uh, this slice I think And then when you have this uh, plan of green network or special plan of green network, then uh, you should also consider or implement this vision at uh, different sectors, uh, at different levels. Uh, in the case of agricultural landscape, you, you, you should think uh, how to use agri-environmental measures, how to create maybe new uh, cor corridors or buffer zones. You should consider in the forest management practices uh, how to regulate the clear-cut areas. So, And, and also those grey infrastructure elements, 
they could be used to promote the green, green network, especially in the case of quarries or open uh, mining areas, they could recultivate the purpose of uh, to be a uh, core area of, of, uh, of a green network. Or we can also have roads with nice trees or hedgerows. If you have opportunity to uh, travel to China, then uh, practically all Chinese highways, uh, they, 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 they are hundreds of meters uh, in wide and, and uh, in every highway is surrounded by the green forest strip, then it's, it, there, there is highway as a green corridor, as a grey corridor and along the highway there is a green corridor. And uh, it's very important to remember that uh, green infrastructure and green network has uh, hierarchical structure. At the planning level, no, there are usually three, four levels in, in different countries. But if you look to one urban area, then you, you can go down to the to the site level that your garden or your your tajar is the, is the unit, and, and you, you you can think at a different level how to promote the biodiversity or how to promote the ecological network. And uh, if you look at the city level green network, then we can consider main rivers, water courses. Uh, parks, uh, uh, historical sites and so on. At the local <coughs> infrastructure level, again, public parks, water courses, and if you look at the site level, we are talking about domestic gardens. Uh, it's very important. What kind of gardens do you have? How many species are there? Uh, food path, uh, green roofs, uh, allotments, uh, and, and so on. Then uh, it's very important to figure out different levels. At every level is their own building. Mm stones and you can have different management structure uh, decisions uh, how to support the ecological network at different levels. And I think the one practical work in future, no, it, it's also linked to the nature-based solutions that uh, how to promote the uh, um, green infrastructure at site level if you are the garden owner or a private house owner, that uh, how to support biodiversity. Размер сада, видовой состав, садовый состав ядки. And in Estonia there is a group of people who are promoting every man biodiversity or every man biodiversity uh, that uh, just uh, propagating what you should uh, do in your, your own quarter that don't, don't mow the grass uh, every week, just maybe two or three times uh, a year, bring uh, natural flowers, not the flowers from, from the Dutch companies and so on and so on. Then there are many, many, many decisions uh, could be made at your personal level. And a um, couple of slides uh, about uh, this uh, European concept of uh, green infrastructure. And this uh, is very directly linked to the 
your previous course on nature-based solutions, what you had in, in, in December. And the same like with, uh, in the case of ecological network, uh, if you look at this uh, strat strategy on uh, green infrastructure of Europe, uh, there are some same reasons why do we need uh, the green infrastructure that uh, the loss of connectivity uh, cause serious threat to um, biodiversity. Uh, living environment is, is uh, the quality of living environment is not uh, good anymore. And we are facing uh, many threats to climate change that we have more and more heavy rains, uh, storms, and we can use green infrastructure to mitigate the impact from the climate change. And uh, if you could implement urban green infrastructure in the right way, then uh, you could be sure that uh, you will reduce many risks like floods, erosion, stormwater runoff. Uh, you, you can support biodiversity and so on. Then you can use those uh, precipitation fields or, or, or green roofs or green parking areas. You can just shortly summarize. Негативных воздействий, таких как э, затопление, эрозия, ведь, э, наводнение, э, передвижение изменяющих веществ с э, дождевой водой, э, а также она помогает э, развитию э, неправительственных организаций, сил социальной организации. Yeah, yeah. То есть для поддержки общественности очень полезно. Они то есть, при создании зеленой инфраструктуры, общественность она как бы начинает контактировать, соответственно, увеличить социальный капитал. And very often it's so that you should have some, uh, uh, at least if there are two or three students at least it's enough always. Even if there is one student in your classroom, then I'm happy to give lecture. <laughs> uh, and I can also learn Russian, then it's a benefit to, to me also. Um, uh, and uh, several uh, European capitals, they took this concept very seriously. And one of the best examples is Copenhagen. Copenhagen had enormous flood in 2007. Practically one third of uh, the town was uh, flooded. And uh, for example, uh, a couple of years ago in 2014, uh, they issued the regulation at uh, uh, Copenhagen, in Copenhagen at the, at the city level that every new public building should have a green roof. Вот, ну и теперь, э, с 2016 -го года, э, имеет такое требование, что каждое, э, ну, скажем так, государственное э, здание, скажем, проект инфраструктурный, они должны иметь зеленую инфраструктуру, а в частности зеленую крышу. Вот, ну, соответственно, законодательно это зима. And it's really, if you're walking, uh in these new buildings, then it's, it's difficult to understand are you in the park or, or it, it's easy to floor number two or three, then it's just a green, green environment. <laughs> Then you can make a proposal to university to have a study trip uh, to Copenhagen to learn. Uh, we went with our students last year. It 
citrus. In our case, uh, we are covering 50% of expenses and 50% every student should uh, contribute. Yeah. But uh, it's always nice to travel and learn uh, from other experiences and then to see wonderful uh, buildings and, and, and uh, territories which are very nicely planned. Yeah, it's, uh, but if you go in the right, way, right time, maybe late April or early May, there are not so many tourists and, and then you can hire the bikes. We, we, we hired bike for three days and we visited all those uh, nice areas. <laughs> Next time I can uh, give a lecture about uh, Copenhagen. <laughs> but of course it's uh, quite, quite expensive uh, capital. And uh, there are six main uh, components of uh, green uh, infrastructure, just to uh, remember. Uh, some of them are elements of the green network as well, like LP ecosystems or multifunctional zones, uh, which could be restored, uh, or, or natural beaches, then it's also part of the uh, ecological network. But, but additionally to the natural and semi-natural ecosystems, we are talking about the artificial beaches uh, uh, and urban elements, uh, uh, artificial beaches like eco ducts, uh, eco bridges, uh, uh, soil covers, and so on, so, so on. You can just conclude summary. What are the main uh, components or elements of uh, green infrastructure? Aqueduct is uh, the water, the running water. Yeah. But I mean, uh, I don't know, just green walls or, or green channels and uh, so on and so on. And again, European Commission is emphasizing the importance of hierarchy, that there are certain decisions what could, could be made at the European level or in the case of Russia at the federal level and there are certain decisions what could be made at the municipal level or at the city level or you can make some decision at the, your private uh, uh, level. And we are we are currently supporting uh, green thinking and green infrastructure at at university and uh, part of communication and education, which could be at the level of one university or it could be also part of national level. And also, one thing is very important, just the example from EU, that, uh, that there are, or also, also in, in, in Russian Federation, that there are so many uh, different uh, legal acts, uh, strategies uh, on different sectors. And uh, green infrastructure is related to many of them. Just to name uh, two main directives for nature conservation in Europe, uh, Habitat Directive and Bird Directive, in Russia, you have Esmer uh, Emeralds Network, for example. It's related directly to the water issues, uh, to climate change, to environmental impact assessment, uh, uh, the new draft soil directive. Then it's it's really a very complex approach. <laughs> Yeah. 
And uh, last slide, I think we have still a uh, couple of minutes time. Um, about uh, what, uh, what is going on. Uh, we have already green infrastructure strategy at European level, which are just listing all importance and key elements and key activities. Uh, and uh, we need uh, more research, definitely, to support. And uh, we need uh, to implement this green infrastructure approach into the special planning at different uh, different level. And uh, if we learn those nice concepts at university, and you will start your working uh, period, then then you know how how to how to implement this this concept. Now it's, it's this uh, lesson is over and